hello everybody um, I want to show you some tricks using a grasshopper and a plugin called uh, boom so I'll jump right into it and I'll show you some magic and if this goes a little bit slow in the video it's because I'm remoting into my work computer um, so first of all, Boom is this building and habitats object model. Basically, it's a way of accessing uh, ETABs, robot structural analysis, and, and all sorts of other uh, structural analysis softwares. You can download it here. Just Google Boom, B-H-O-M. Download the installer, press play, and it's on your computer. And uh, if you're interested in it, of course, they have a GitHub page where you can find resources, samples, and stuff like this. Um, you could call the learning curve a little bit steep. Um, but I mean, I started using it two or three days ago, and now I'm getting the hang of it. So it's it's not impossible at all. So what we have here is a, is a grasshopper script. Uh, we can, you know, like normally it's uh, parametric, so you can change all your stuff. And, you know, I've just set up some basic geometry here for the test. And what I want to do is, of course, uh, analyze this structure using a robot structural analysis. So boom looks like this in, in Grasshopper. Um, it evolves around adapters. And adapters, they're basically the APIs, uh, the requests, either you pull or you push, so uh, create or write, and then you can do some different modifications on it. So here is the, is the main adapter. This connects to a robot. So when I uh, toggle this to true, give it a few seconds, and then you'll see in the background robot is opening a blank one let's get it here all right so without talking too much about this this is just some geometry to create what you see in grasshopper um so here firstly i'm using regular grasshopper geometry and then this is one of the boom objects so it's a it's a standard definition of um, properties and metadata a little bit like in BIM or IFC models where this is then the translation layer going into robot. So here you are, I'm creating some uh, pillars. So, and then here I'm doing the same with the beams. So I'm creating the geometry and here I'm putting some properties on it. What kind of beam, what steel strength. Then I put some releases on it because, uh, yeah, sometimes you need releases. So the bar, I want them to be pin pin, so it's not stiff in the connections. Uh, you define it here. Here I'm making the floors, just basic saying it's some concrete and it's 240 millimeters thick. Here I'm defining just a few loads. This is just a test I want to show you. You can build this bigger. So this is the dead load on top, and this is the live load in the bottom. These loads, um, I take him and then I pull him into some load cases. So dominating um, dead load and dominating live load. And then I put the factors on this. This you can actually do in Excel using uh, tables and stuff as well, if you prefer that. Uh, I'm keeping it here for now because it's inside. Uh, load specifications is where you say what object, so this is a, a, one of the flaws. I, I take the object, I put it in here as the object, and then I define the load I want on it, and then I give it a name. So this is now an object that I can push into robot. So what you see here is I'm pushing in, this is my entwine element before I push things into robot. So from here you see that I entwine this is a, maybe a little bit small, but I take some, this is all the pillars, 
columns and this is all the beams this is all the floors and then i take of course my load combinations and then i take my loads that i've applied to the elements so when i push this button it will push into robot all the geometry that we just created so now you see the geometry from up here is down here and it's a full robot element i'll we'll just give it a second to update and you can see it's created some members and panels and etc. Of course, to do like just a quick quality control, I'll take the members, and you'll see surely it's defined that it's an IP500 and the steel strength is S235. So, so that is correct. So then we have that, then we would of course want to analyze it. So you can do that from here. So I press this toggle and then it's done the analyzing. So this instability, so, well, the model isn't perfect, but uh, it works. Disable it again. So what you would want to do now is of course, you want to see a little bit more results you can see now you can see all the curves and all the stuff that you can normally see but i would like to just jump straight to this deal design you shouldn't do this in real life you should check your model a lot more so what i want to do here is i want to create some code groups and then i want to set up the member types so what's the buckling lengths etc etc so first I retrieve the bus. This is a pull object from the boom. Uh, so it pulls the objects using the API from, from robot structural analysis. So you request based on a bar type that is a member in, in, in robot. So you first retrieve this and then you'll see that here you have now uh, 36 objects, which is, yeah, it's probably all right. Um, Oh yeah, it's filtered. So I filtered. So right now you see that I'm putting in a filter value only looking for the columns. So what I then do is I want to add uh, the bars to a code group, but I also want to uh, give them some uh, framing uh, properties. And this is maybe what you will struggle a bit with is the framing uh, properties, how to utilize that. And, and this down here it goes there's some explosions of the boom objects you'll use that a lot to drill into the data layers um, and then here i define a code group this is a push object where then then pushes the code group into uh, into onto all the elements then after that up here i first define a framing property that would be a member type called prop type call it whatever you want column beam stiff beam uh, slender beam whatever um, and then i override some of the um, some of the properties using this little uh, property overrider it's uh, the one up here you can modify any boom objects then I push it in directly into the objects and the adapter and down here you see once I've retrieved or made the, the code group, then I let it directly activate the next one. So I make two push uh, things. This is because the IDs are a little bit funny. I didn't find a really neat solution to put them in both at the same time yet. So what this does is if we go here and investigate, you will see at the moment we have no code groups and we have no types. So when I push here, You should see an update. This can be a little bit slow. Here you go. So you see code group, it's called columns and it just filled out all the props. So what that does is you can by pressing around three buttons in your script and of course adjusting the geometry. Well, then you can do a member verification if you want. You can do by the members here Oh, we didn't calculate it's out of date whatever so one of them is not holding it's a 2.59 uh, yeah well expected this is not really a building design it's just a test for the connection 
so a few of them aren't aren't good. Uh, and then, of course, because you also made the code groups, um, you can just verify by the code group, which is uh, in many cases a lot more neat. You can structure your objects into groups, and then you'll see this one pops up 2.59, so it's it, it doesn't work. And then you basically have analysis of this whole structure in, I don't know, but it didn't take very long to model. Uh, I mean, once you get the structure of how the boom objects work, I mean, you can model the geometry and yeah, if you know Grasshopper, it will take you no time, depending on the complexity. Uh, you can even import it from a different model, whatever. Um, and then, of course, you can go to the uh, printout. Uh, you all know this if you've used the printout composition, and then you can, you know, make your reports. And I didn't really take it with all the uh, moments and all this stuff. Uh, because I think it's not really part of this. For me, this was about getting utilization of bigger structures uh, pretty fast. And you could iterate through and change beams and you could make different groups and more groups. And you, you, if you do structures, you know how that works and you could make this script more elaborate and, and, and separate it a lot more. But for the sake of realizing that there's something called boom, that is absolutely amazing if you want to connect to like structural softwares like robot or Revit for that sake. Uh, I think this this is sufficient. Uh, yeah, we'll replace it and then here it is. So a regular report, all your data and uh, you will see the steel strength is right. The types are changed. Uh, You'll see material here is concrete. Um, you can see meshing type, and you can see all that basic stuff that you normally look for when you do quality controls. Uh, load values, you will see. You will see there's two combinations, uh, dominating dead and live load. And I can see the case nature in one of them should be changed to live. So it's good to look your stuff through. And you'll see here the combinations. You have the values where you have 1.2 and 1 and 1 and 1.5. So that's your load combinations defined easy in in, in, in Boom. Uh, and not having to do it on every single member or, or however you do it. I know it can be tedious to draw in, in, in robot. And taking it from Revit or tends to be a mess, if you ask me. Um, yeah, so there you have it. This is your steel, all that stuff. Uh, and then lastly, you have your code group verifications, which I like that you can do. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, interesting workflow from uh, Rhino Grasshopper into Robot.